Welcome to Resident Evil Village VR, a game that will absolutely blow your freaking mind. In here, we have dead people, werewolves, a big werewolf, an absolutely huge hairy werewolf, bats with tongues, a tall beautiful lady, a vomity yucky dude, freaking Magneto himself, a creepy old person, a bird lady, and of course Chris Redfield. To think the first Resident Evil game that came out in 1996, three years before I was born by the way, looked like this. And now in the year 2023, we're able to wake up, strap on a VR headset, and step foot into another world like the one that Capcom has made here is just truly incredible. Your first steps into this world will have you standing there in awe, saying things like, where the hell am I? How did I get here? And why are these people trying to kill me? I'm gonna break this video here into three parts, because who doesn't love a good three-point video? So without further ado, here is part number one. I've been playing VR on and off for the last five years, starting with my first ever headset, the PSVR 1. Then, a year ago, I moved on and bought the Quest 2, and now with Sony's latest hardware release, I now own the glorious PSVR 2. This headset is incredible, with very few downsides to it. It's lightweight, it feels good to have on, the OLED display is crisp to look through, and it even comes with these like stringy earbuds that come with the headset. I've found that, you know, these have actually been quite handy. Normally, I would just chuck them straight in the bin. But for free earbuds, these do a great job at keeping you immersed in the games that you're playing. For example, while playing through this game, I'll just be walking through an area and out of nowhere, I'll hear the faint sound of footsteps above or behind me. I'll spin around and at the last second catch a glimpse at an enemy running around in the background which scares me literally every single time. The gameplay here resembles what we have come to know and love about the Resident Evil series, with the main character starting out with literally nothing but a knife and by the end of the game, you're walking around like the Terminator ready to eradicate the world of this wolf plague. The gameplay here in Resident Evil Village VR... Okay, that's just too much of a mouthful. From now on, can we can we just call it Village or RE-VR or something? That would be really, really helpful. Okay, let's, let's just stick with that. The combat sections in RE Village are among some of the best that I've ever experienced in any virtual reality game. For example, having to manually reload my guns every time they are empty is always so satisfying to do. Sometimes I find myself acting like I'm John Wick, like I'll be in the middle of a fight and I'll run into bullets in my rifle. Instead of reloading the rifle, I'll quickly with my right hand grab out my pistol and shoot the enemy that's coming at me while still holding the rifle in my left hand or I'll reload my pistol like he does in the movie by flicking the mag out and watch it go flying off into the distance. Little things like this is what helps keep me engaged and immersed in what I'm playing. And it's what makes VR so fun and different than just playing a normal game with a controller. You are in the world. These are your hands. These are your guns. And you, the player, can move them, swing them, do whatever you want with them. In the process of bringing this game over to us VR users, Capcom has made some really great changes that really help with the quality of life of this game. But instead of me going through explaining each one of them one by one, and telling you how they make the game better in great detail, I think we're just gonna speed run it. We're gonna try and get through it all in less than 30 seconds, and it's, it's gonna be great. You trust me? You, you ready? All right, here we go. To heal, you pull the first set on yourself. You have to manually reload and rechamber your guns every time. Most doors have to be manually opened. Levers have to be manually pulled. The shop has a different layout. You can melee as fast as you want. Any gun can break a box without firing a bullet throw the knife doing damage to enemies. To block, you have to raise your actual arms up in front of you. Ladders have to be manually climbed. You can pick up and hold notes of collectibles. Your flashlight mines and pipe bombs are hidden in your jacket pockets. The map is attached to your waist. You can assign different weapons to different parts of your body. And lastly, you can dual wield your weapons. There's probably more changes that they've made for this game, but these were just a few that I found to be of real benefit, especially the one about being able to melee as fast as you want. Sometimes I would find myself out of ammo, standing there amongst three enemies that are all coming at me, and all I could do is resort to stabbing them as fast as I could, and it literally would make anyone watching me through my window think that I'm an absolute lunatic that should be definitely in an asylum. The game has a lot of cutscenes, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. They help tell the story of a dad that's trying to find his daughter who's been taken, 
And so, just like Liam Neeson, he sets out and single-handedly starts to eradicate every living wolf on the planet. I will find you. And I will kill you. The cutscenes in this game all play out in virtual reality, with the exception of a couple which just play out in like a normal flat screen mode, which is kind of strange at times, but there's only a few of them so it's not really something to complain about. The VR cutscenes themselves are great to be a part of, but unfortunately they're not interactable at all, so all you'll be doing here is standing there, stuck in place, waiting until they finish. You ungrateful, selfish wretch! The option to skip the cutscene is there, but honestly, sometimes it's just really fascinating to stand there and watch how each one plays out. The character development and lore that each boss has is interesting to learn, plus the acting that's gone in to portray these characters is just all round enjoyable to watch. Another thing I found interesting is the use of motion in cutscenes, and what I mean by this is that I always had a thing about how cutscenes play out in VR, mainly because I would find myself getting motion sick by the slightest movement. And maybe it's because I've spent a long time at this point playing VR, but I didn't find myself getting motion sick from these cutscenes, even though some of them had you literally falling, being thrown around the room and strung up off the floor, I didn't find myself getting sick once. On another point, the story here perfectly captures what I love about the Resident Evil games. It's dark, violent, gruesome, but yet elegant and beautiful, and flows from one chapter to another. The different locations that the story will take you will have you being entertained for hours as you search through in a creepy abandoned dollhouse, a massive castle full of mystery and these creepy golem-like characters. You'll be going through a putrid swamp, an abandoned village covered in death, a mechanical factory and this creepy ass catacomb place. The story will have you visit each of these areas and more as you carry on your quest to find your lost daughter. Obviously there's more to the story than that, but for the sake of spoilers I'll leave it out um, as I can already feel the comment section about to roast me for saying way too much at this point anyway. I wanted to dedicate a whole point to this because the work that Capcom has done in creating such a vibrant set of locations literally has me stopping and staring out into the distance, taking in each and every view that I come across. In the first few minutes of the game, you'll walk up this hill and upon reaching the top you'll be able to see most of the locations the game takes place. But honestly, just standing here looking out at the mountains and waterfalls in the distance is truly breathtaking. In my time of playing in VR, I've experienced my fair share of unimpressive VR games, but this one is truly just beautiful to be in. The old village vibe that the game has takes me back to playing games like Skyrim VR, which is my favorite VR game of all time. Maybe because I put 100 hours in to gain the platinum, or the fact that I was actually just addicted to the game. Playing four to five hours a day for like a week straight at one point. <laughs> I'll pump those numbers up, those are rookie numbers in this racket. Another reason why this world is so beautiful to be in comes from the fact that this is also being played out on Sony's brand new VR headset. So not only is the world just gorgeous to look at, but now paired with that, with the fact that we can witness it all in 4K resolution is, I'll say it once again, absolutely positively breathtaking. Before this video finishes, I wanted to quickly take a moment to say a massive thank you to you all. We just hit 900 subscribers on this channel, and I mean, like, it's always been a dream of mine to make entertaining content, and now to be able to do so is just, it feels great. To be able to edit these videos, record them all, and especially make a video all about VR, to me is just the, the best thing ever, and I don't know what else to say, really. <laughs> Um, this was the first of what I hope to be the start of a new series on this channel where I unpack some of the latest VR and non-VR games that are releasing. It'll hopefully be an entertaining way for you to be able to decide if this game is worth your time and money. I plan to make more of these soon, so stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, and share this video with anyone you may be trying to convince to buy a VR headset, or you're trying to convince to buy you this game. <laughs> so once again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.